as I've previously stated, Warlocks are one of the most powerful classes in the game, if not the most powerful one. At the same time, Warlocks are also one of the most unstable and risky classes due to being so incredibly potent and often prone to insanity. From cosmic beings such as Kill Jaden to Orc Warlocks, they have left an incredible mark upon World of Warcraft. Utilizing many fell energy along with other potent magics, what are the most powerful warlocks in the lore? Brought to you by Frank Pro Shooter, one of the best shooter games for mobile devices with almost 50 million players and 1 million players around daily. You will get extra special rewards if you use my link to join the game. The rules are quite simple, collect characters with more than 80 to get, build your own strategy and destroy enemy bunkers. New fragments are released all the time with the latest one being Marco Polo, the cook that can shoot meatballs and throw walls of spaghetti. There are 3 different modes, the newest one being payload where you need to escort your car to victory while at the same time slowing down the enemy or to just increase your defense. Check out the new mode and join my club Doron. Even if you already have Frag Pro Shooter, you will get free rewards, 1 golden chest, 500 coins and 50 diamonds worth $6. Check out the link in the description. Number 10. Zulu Head The Whacked as the orcs were influenced by the force of the Burning Legion, they were cut off from the elements and shamans and mass turned to demonic magics, becoming warlocks. Zulu Head the Wacked was one of the few, if not the last remaining shaman of the entire horde due to distrust for Gul'dan and his general power, but ultimately he too eventually succumbed to dark magics. Zulu Head was incredibly loyal to Blackhand, later on pledged allegiance to the Dragon Maw clan and despite working for the sons of Blackhand, he also the Doomhammer. In particular, he came into the possession of the fabled Demon Soul, which ultimately helped subjugate the Red Dragon fight. Zulikhead directed the Horde to take over the Blackrock Mountain and followed the Horde in battle against the High Elves of Quel'Thalas. After the Second War and the failure of the Horde, he ventured back to Draenor, survived the destruction and at an unknown point in time pledged what remained of his clan to Illidan. There, using his experience, he had enslaved the Netherwing Dragons but was ultimately defeated. Zulu Head Wacked was one of the most powerful orc warlocks, maybe even close to Gul'dan, but of course was not nearly as empowered by the Legion. Number 9. Kenretad Ebonlock one of the most notable and curious human warlocks. He was present as an alliance member during the battle against Illidan at the top of Black Temple and since then he was just obsessed with gaining more and more power. He wanted to learn about how Illidan managed to control demons despite not being a member of the Burning Legion himself. Additionally, after the fall of Deathwing, he formed the Council of the Black Harvest with the greatest warlocks of Azeroth. After learning about the power left by Ragnaros and Cho'Gal, he ventured to Outland once again to continue his mission to search for more power. Unfortunately, his curiosity was his downfall as he absorbed too much fell and was corrupted, turning into a monstrous demonic form. Kenretad was defeated, banished and later returned back to the fold once again to serve the Council of the Black Harvest, helping us defeat the Burning Legion. Despite being defeated, he is one of the most notable and was one of the most powerful warlocks of Azeroth. He literally enslaved a pit lord and turned him into a minion and controlled an army of demons, essentially turning into like a discount mini Illidan. Number 8. Meryl Felstorm Meryl is literally one of the most unique characters in the entire game. He is nearly 3000 years old, essentially the oldest human ever, if he can even be considered a human at this point. We know that he fought in the ancient troll wars thousands of years ago and it is speculated that he is among the first 100 human mages taught by the elves. He was killed in the war against the trolls but managed to stay alive in an undead form as his task was too great. So he is one of the first undead ever on Azeroth that we know, neither a Forsaken nor having anything to do with the Scourge. Meryl Winterstorm was one of the founding members of the Council of Tereswal and was later a mentor of the son of Medivh, Medan. Now, just to show you how badass this guy is, is best seen by the fact that he allowed a Dreadlord to possess him so that the two wills could battle each other inside his head. He did win, but unfortunately the corruption started to set in. He exiled himself and changed his name to Felstorm, but unfortunately his demon returned in Legion as the Dreadlord attacked Dalaran. 
Ultimately though, he was freed from the corruption, he reformed the Tyrus God, the elite mage guard of Deleran, and helped us defeat the Legion. Now, I know he's a part of the Mage Order whole, but as always, the classes are never black and white in the lore. He was one of the first human mages, more than likely, but first off, he was undead, which means he must have dabbled in necromancy. He literally had a demon inside him, which not even warlocks tend to do, and his old action figure was him literally just wearing a warlock set. So, despite his class not being too clear, Meryl Felstorm is one of the most powerful warlocks in Azeroth, as well as one of the most experienced. Number 7. Ner'zhul Chieftain of the Shadowmoon clan and one of the finest shamans in all of Orcish history. His lore is incredibly confusing due to a million different retcons, but we know that he wasn't really that bad of a guy and that he was tricked by Kill Jaden and Gul'dan, leading the Horde to form and ultimately to their doom. Eventually, Ner'zhul became a warlock and he remained on Draenor, ultimately becoming a war chief of the remaining clans, attempting to open portals to new worlds for the Horde to invade. His Spells and portals were so powerful that they literally tore the planet apart. As he attempted to escape, he was taken away by Kill Jaden, tortured and turned into the very first Lich King. Then, as a Lich King, he did the entire Scourge thing and the Plague of Undeath nearly conquering half the planet, although not sure how much of that can really be attributed to his personal skills or anything to do with Warlocks, but nonetheless, Ner'zhul was behind most. He wasn't that much of a fighter, so we really don't have a million different scenarios where he was defeating enemies left and right, but seeing that Kill Jaden sought to use him as a Lich King and that he was such a key figure, Ner'zhul is one of the most influential shamans and warlocks. Number 6. Shogal one of the rare two-headed Heimologers thought to have been one of the most intelligent of all of them. So intelligent, in fact, that the ruling elite saw him as an enemy and wanted to just assassinate him. However, Cho'Gal found Gul'dan, learned Fel, and learned about the Pale Orcs and the Void. Then, with his arcane expertise, Fel magic, and Void energies, he tied and burned the Imperator Margok alive. Shogal was one of the key members of the Old Horde and thought to have been among the most powerful ones as well. He led the Void Cult together with Gul'dan, but ultimately was nearly killed as his master died. Following the Tomo Sargeras, he ventured to Kalimdor, where he heeded the calls of the Old Gods. There, he took over the Twilight Scammer and nearly managed to summon an Old God, but was ultimately defeated by Medan. Shogal survived this ordeal and continued furthering the cult. He had enslaved elementals, summoned what is thought to be a forgotten one, and greatly expanded the Twilight's hammer. However, ultimately, he was defeated by the adventures. Despite failing, Shogal is just out of this world, like literally out of this world, an intelligent mage, a warlock, a necromancer, and a practitioner of every possible dark magic under the sun. Seeing that he himself defeated the Emperor of the Ogres, one of the most powerful characters on Draenor, and had great command over both arcane, fell, and void magics, Shogal is one of the greatest warlocks of both Azeroth and Draenor. Number 5. Medivh One of the greatest characters of the Warcraft series, a guardian, a mage, a necromancer, and a warlock. It is hard to really classify him, but he can definitely be classified as a warlock by the definition, at least among other things. So, Medivh is the son of Adrian, one of the most powerful mages ever, was the last guardian that was possessed by the spirit of Sargeras since birth. While his role was instrumental, I do feel like his strength is a bit overblown, but he was no doubt one of the most powerful sorcerers ever on Azeroth. His mother literally said he is more powerful than her, and she defeated the avatar of Sargeras. The only the only thing that undermines his strength is that he was defeated by Lothar and Khadgar, but before his supposed death, he had accomplished many things. Among one of the things, he literally opened a dark portal that managed to allow the entirety of the Orcish Horde to pass through and to scorch the entire zone. In terms of straight up power, he turned a group of merchants into Death Knight like Dark Riders with a single spell, and there was an old bit of lore how he summoned a gigantic beetle that was literally turned into an island, but I feel like this bit might have been retconned. He communicated with Gul'dan, worked with demonic magic, and was possessed by Sargeras himself, which is more than almost any other warlock in the universe has going for them. Number 4. Keltas. I know 
everyone here will say he is a mage, not a warlock, but is he really? Keltas was a blood mage, one of the finest mages of the entire alliance and a senior member of the Kirentor, and as Qualtalas fell, he had abandoned the arcane and turned towards demonic energies. As classes are not so black and white in game, if you have a mage using demonic magics and later on turning nearly half demon, what is he if not really a warlock? As Sunwell fell, he searched for a way to ease the hunger of his people, ultimately venturing to Outland and joining Gilliden and siphoning fell magic. However, his plans became quite different as he later betrayed Illidan and began working for Kill Jaden directly, having been granted a lot more power. He attacked Chetanat and Tempest Keep, ultimately leading the Draenei to breach Azeroth and to progress their story as they had. After being defeated in Tempest Keep, he somehow managed to survive, having his appearance completely changed due to felt magic. He returned to Quotalas, assaulted his own kingdom, and almost managed to summon Kill Jaden into the world. However, as he was defeated, Keltus could be found in the Shadowlands as one of the most powerful souls to arrive, having caught the eye of Sire Denatrius himself. He then amplified his sins and almost destroyed his souls, only to ultimately be freed by us. Even as a mage, he was one of the most powerful on all of Azeroth with incredible abilities and being able to destroy orcs with a single spell. As I mentioned, Classes are very vague in WoW, but in my opinion, Keltus was ultimately a warlock by definition. I mean, this guy almost managed to summon the second in command to Sargeras, and just by the fact that the Nathiris decided to pick him out of so many other souls that arrived from the entire universe should tell you just how powerful Keltus really is. Number 3 Gul'dan there are two Gul'dans, both incredibly powerful, although the alternate one is definitely more powerful than the other. The two stories conflict often, but they match for the most part. Gul'dan was exactly what an orc should not be, a weakling, a schemer, and a backstabber. However, these skills were exactly what was needed as he got in touch with the Legion and acquired demonic powers. He was directly responsible for essentially enslaving the entire orcish race, creating the original horde and leading the invasion of Azeroth. In the initial story, he raised the Tome of Sogeras in search for artifacts and was killed by demons and his skull was used as a very powerful artifact. In the alternate storyline, he was sent to Azeroth after failing to take over Draenor and had nearly conquered the planet but was once again defeated. Despite failing, Gul'dan was literally the most powerful mortal warlock ever, hands down. First off, while he was weak physically, he was incredibly powerful and could literally drain the life of most enemies on sight. His magics are responsible for the destruction of Draenor, he literally raised the tome from under the sea. Then alternate Gul'dan was crazy empowered by the Legion and he literally blasted Varian, one of the most powerful warriors ever, with a single touch. Even before the full empowerment, he was as powerful as Khadgar, as we have seen in their battles. Despite being the most powerful warlock, hands down at least for the mortal ranks in a straight out battle, his main power came from scheming and backstabbing ways, as after all, the original one was defeated by Doomhammer. Even though Gul'dan lost essentially two times, you can't really say that he failed, as after all, the original horde nearly destroyed the human kingdoms, and the alternate one did quite a bit of damage on Draenor, as well as on Azeroth. Number 2. Archimond The Defiler, the Eredar overlord of the Legion forces and the former leader of Argus. As Sergeras offered him unprecedented power, he together with Kill Jaden joined. If Kill Jaden is the right hand, Archimond would be the left. While his brother was cunning and manipulative, Archimond was also intelligent but was more of a direct frontline general known as the Mad Warlord and the Fist of Sargeras. In fact, he was so brutal and heartless that almost any failure to do with what he said would result in death. Archimond was also incredibly powerful both physically and as a sorcerer. First off, he was one of the most powerful mages in the universe, then he consumed ungodly amounts of hell and became one of the strongest warlocks in all of existence. Really, he and Kill Jaden are like two levels or like ten levels different when compared to other mortal warlocks. Archimond snapped the neck quite easily of the ancient Malorne. He literally destroyed countless worlds as a general, and as you might have seen, he just shattered the entirety of Deloran with a single spell by playing with a little sand castle. Then all the heroes and the best mages and shamans such as Jaina, Troll, and Mafurian fought him, but not even that was enough, and it took the entire world tree just to defeat his fort. 
Now, in Lords of Danor, he was defeated by us with the help of other notable figures and the entire Orc and Draenei armies. Now, despite his relatively easy defeat, which I mainly attribute to just bad writing, Archimonde was one of the strongest, not just warlocks, but beings in the entire universe across the entire cosmology chart. And lastly, number one, Kill Jaden. Actually, one of the two leaders of Argus, alongside Velen, with Archimonde only later becoming a ruler himself. Kill Jaden was one of the finest majors of all time that became the right hand of Sargeras, as he was empowered by him to the absolute max. While Archimonde was the frontline commander, Kill Jaden was the deceiver, the guy behind the scenes, the manipulator. He recruited like half the Burning Legion, he got the orcs to defeat the Draenei and invade Azeroth, he supposedly created the Lich King, although that is a bit challenged now, and orchestrated a million different actions, helping Sargeras conquer countless planets. Even in straight out combat, Kill Jaden is no doubt incredibly powerful, albeit we never saw too much action including him, seeing that he literally just created the Lich King from the Zul, so you could guess how powerful he really was as a villain. He also empowered Gul'dan and allowed him to do essentially anything notable he did. Now, I know people might say how is he the most powerful warlock of all time when we literally just defeated him in the raid group, but keep in mind we didn't defeat him. It was Illidan, Khadgar, Velen and us with incredibly powerful artifacts from all over Azeroth that possess incredible power. I also think Blizzard just nerfed him lore wise in order to progress the story, but he was essentially the second in power when compared to Sargeras and had aspirations to take over the entire Legion. Whether he was more powerful than Archimonde it is really hard to say, so I'd say the number one and two on this list is a really close match, but I would say he was more intelligent and more than likely more well versed in magic and fair energy. Thank you for watching, check out what are the most powerful priests by clicking on the screen and also check out Donald's Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time.